So as Miles Rebel said, uh, the U.S. has been training militias in Afghanistan and things like that uh, to fight the Taliban, and instead, many are joining the Taliban. And what gets me is I don't know why in the States uh, Americans feel the need to lie to themselves and the media portrays this war as against terrorism and things. Let's be upfront about it. The reason there's war in the Middle East is because it's to secure oil profits. I mean, really, think about it. With uh, all, with the growing loyalty to these Islamic fundamentalists and things like that, uh, their society does not grow. It does not develop. It, did, it does not become a rivalry to the first world. And that's why they're in the Middle East. It is a perpetual war. It's not going to end. And it's not because somehow they want death and despair. That's just a byproduct. And it's not because somehow war in and of itself is profitable. It's because that by going in there, they're actually motivating Middle Eastern people to become loyal to these Islamic radical groups. And then in turn, uh, it creates xenophobia, ultranationalism, things like that. And then they don't develop uh, into a first world society. They don't develop technologically. They don't develop culturally. They become much more regressive because it's a reaction to, you know, American imperialism invading them. That's where the term reactionary comes from. They are reacting as the imperialists sought them to. They knew how they were going to react. They were counting on it, and so they did. The worst thing that could happen to the first world is to leave them alone for 10 to 20 years and just let things run their course. And then the Middle East would start having more schools, equal rights for women, things like that. And then they would start to develop into a first world nation and realize, hey, we're getting screwed here. You know, our corrupt Saudi prince government and things like that are selling oil to the imperialists that were killing us a few years back. And, you know, they're making lots of money. The Americans are obviously making lots of money. Well, they're making lots of money by buying the oil and then selling it to us at a exponential price and things like that. And thus, they're all making lots of money and having lots of power over the means of production while the rest of us live in fucking dirt holes. And once they realize that, given that, you know, the America isn't there to invade them and keep them distracted, then they, you know, revolt, they take over, as Saudi princes are probably hanged and shit, and then suddenly oil becomes much more expensive. And so, and if, the irony here is if that America was just upfront about that, about that, most Americans would probably support the war, even more so than now. The problem is, if they admitted to that, then the rest of the world would realize just how criminal all of this bullshit is. So, I can understand why they lie about it, but in a way, not really, because every, every nation on the planet is doing some evil shit. So, what's the difference? What's the difference between one nation doing evil shit and another nation doing evil shit? If it wasn't for the corrupt Saudi government, uh, you know, the America wouldn't have the motivation to start these wars because they wouldn't be getting oil at the, these nominal fees to then sell to the American public with expensive ass gas prices and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's, there's no single person to blame. It isn't the Illuminati. It isn't, you know, just, the American government, it isn't just the Saudi government, it's everybody. There is a multifaceted blame uh, in every direction. So, you know, I don't even know where to go with this because you're not going to solve that problem overnight. The fact is, uh, the Saudi princes know damn well what's going on and they're selling oil to America and America's perpetuating the war in uh, the Middle East so that more militias are formed, more fundamentalist militias, and that way the people become more regressive, and that way they never develop technologically or anything, and that, that few singularity, that 1%, get to live the high life in the Middle East, while the few 1% in, the American, uh, in America and in the West in general get to live the high life, and the rest of us, Fuck us. That, that's really what it comes down to. And the fact that you think this is just a government thing just proves your ignorance. I mean, sure, government has a, a role in it, but at the end of the day, it's private oil companies. It's private militias 
uh, being formed. It's private militias, 50% of the time going in there, and things like that. This all, this all comes back to capitalism. At the end of the day, it's just about a select group of people controlling the means of production. And that's capitalism. The worst thing that could happen to capitalism, the worst thing that could happen to the warfare state, the worst thing that could happen to American imperialism, is an all-encompassing government. The worst thing that could happen to all these private owners is that one day, every nation on earth becomes hyper-nationalist, Stalinist, and then the jig is up. That does not necessarily say that there be no more wars, that does not necessarily say that the class war would end, or anything like that. But it would be very bad for the bourgeoisie. Uh, but, you know, that's what I keep saying here. Nationalism does not necessarily have to be pro-capitalism, but nine out of ten times it is. They find a way. So, when you think about these things uh, as a communist or just in general, you have to realize that nationalism and capitalism uh, tend to go hand in hand. And while they don't have to, why take that chance? Why bother to be a nationalist knowing what it can lead to? And even at its best, it's still going to have warfare. It's still going to have enslavement. It's still going to have the class gap. So I guess that's really all I have to say here.